We all wish we had more hours in the day to focus on the things we want to, whether that be to cook, learn a language, or, like a lot of musicians, focus on their music. It's tough to focus when you have unlimited information at your fingertips. Today, we are looking at how to find more time to practice, so if you're like us and tend to procrastinate a lot, don't go anywhere. First up, set aside time explicitly just for music. If you're an aspiring artist, you really need to set aside a regular time each day to focus on music and only music. If you struggle remembering things, why don't you set an alarm on your phone? And don't choose a silly time like first thing in the morning if you're not a morning person. Take some time to think about what time works best for you, and when it comes to that time, disconnect from everything else. Once you have your time in mind, it's your job to stick to it. After all, you've chosen the time that's the best for you, so don't put it off. Every day, millions of people have the same feelings of not wanting to do something. Just look at most of the global workforce. There's only one way to improve when it comes to music, and that is regular practice. Pretty soon, it'll just become a habit. Next up, we're focusing on having fun, so stay tuned. One of the biggest reasons people stop practicing is because it's not fun anymore. Music should be fun. It's one of the most pleasurable experiences we have in life. So if you're not having fun, then something is badly wrong. You need to go back and figure out what it is you want to achieve. Maybe you want to one day release an album, or maybe just play down at the pub on open mic night. Whatever it is, get back to putting that at the forefront of your mind, and practice will soon become fun again. Just think how much fun you'll have when the whole pub erupts to you, belting out a cheeky Ed Sheeran number. Once you get back to this mind frame, practice will be a walk in the park again. Feel free to comment below with your favorite open mic tune. We're talking about practice structure next. You need to figure out how long you want to practice for and then stick to it. Don't plan to practice for four hours a day. It's not viable, and you'll just end up quitting and not picking the instrument back up. It's just as good to start off small and build up to an hour or two. If you're an accomplished player already, then maybe you want to start off with slightly longer sessions. So just remember, it's fine to take a break in the middle. You can also divide your practice up to focus on different aspects of music so you don't get burnt out practicing the same hook over and over again. Rewarding yourself is okay too. Rewarding yourself is one of the best tactics to make sure you keep something up. After you've completed your allotted practice time for, say, one week, grab that chocolate bar or have a glass of wine. Whatever your vice is, you deserve it. If you wait until you've received a Grammy to have a beer, you might be waiting a long time. Slow and steady wins the race, right? Once you find rewarding yourself helps, which you will, you will feel extra motivated to get your practice time on and even look forward to it after a little while. Next up, we're talking about reclaiming lost time. So we've established our music time each day, but we all have other parts of the day when we mindlessly are scrolling or biting our nails, right? Well, there are loads of examples of times during the day when we are literally doing nothing, driving to work, sitting in a waiting room, etc. You don't always need to be using your instrument to be practicing. There are plenty of apps you can use to train your ears or simply listen to music theory podcasts or tutorials. In fact, there are many things available to you you might not ever listen to music again. You can search the App Store or Google Play for apps you might think might be beneficial to you. So what are you waiting for? Do you have any tips on good apps you have used yourself? Let us know below. Practicing in your mind is also underrated. As we have just mentioned, we don't always have our instruments in hand, so it might help you to imagine chords that might play well together. It's more common than you think. Tons of musicians use this technique of visualizing to improve their form. If you're not the sort of person who finds this technique helpful, try leaving a blank piece of sheet music in your glove compartment or handbag or backpack, and when you have an idea, you can simply jot it down. If it doesn't work when you get to your instrument, who cares? You might just strike gold during a moment of inspiration stuck in traffic and turn into the next Bob Dylan. That'd be pretty cool, right? This technique also works well for memorizing your music. You don't need your instrument to practice the fingering of that solo. You know the chords by now, so you can practice it in your head. We're talking distractions next, so stay with us. In this day and age, the main problem when it comes to practicing is distractions. We all have access to multiple devices with plenty of apps just screaming at us to procrastinate. If you have problems in this department, you most certainly are not alone. When it comes to practice time, unplug. This is imperative. Switch off your phone and head to a quiet room with no TVs or tablets or the like. We have heard of one prominent musician who used to practice in the bathroom for this very reason. No distractions. Hey, whatever works, right? What is your best technique for dealing with distractions? Let us know below. Next up, we're talking about how you can prioritize your music if you have a busy schedule. If, like us, your daily schedules are jam-packed, you need to figure out a way you can prioritize your music so you don't end up not playing, which would be a tragedy. Do you watch too much TV? Westerners most certainly struggle with this, so maybe it's time to cancel that Netflix subscription. Or just make a plan to watch an hour less TV per night. I mean, you don't have to finish every show you start. Some of them are terrible, aren't they? With all this extra time, 
just think about that Rolling Stones lick you could master. Keith would be proud. Sounds good, right? We're talking goals next, and not the squad variety. Stay there. One thing successful people have in common, they all set goals. Both short and long-term goals. Goals are imperative to structure your practice. They help you hit targets and assess why you are maybe not hitting them if you are struggling. First things first, write down what you want to achieve in the short, medium, and long term. Again, this does not have to be anything crazy. Mastering D to G by next week is perfectly acceptable as a short-term goal. Also, you should write down goals that work for you. Don't set goals that you truly don't care about or don't really want to learn how to master. It's too easy to abandon them if it becomes a little difficult if you do this. When you are planning your goals, make them realistic too. Don't write down a goal which aims to perfect Mozart's fifth by next Tuesday. That's just ridiculous. If you really want to master his epic, you can. Just set manageable goals. Setting a target of a year from now is perfectly fine. Just set smaller ones in between that help you learn small pieces of the music at a time. Finally, it might be a good idea to find a practice partner. Hanging around with good influences is a positive thing to do, not just when practicing music, but in all walks of life. If you surround yourself with people who have the same goals as you, music-wise, you'll be able to spur each other on, and this is only going to help you achieve those goals. Accountability is a fantastic tool when it comes to music practice. Music is a chance to get out and socialize too, whether it be joining a band, attending an open mic, or just writing music with a pal. This interaction with like-minded people will only help your quest. Also, you will learn quicker if you're hanging around with people who have similar or greater ability at this time than you. It cannot harm you to find a practice partner, so get out there and find someone you can bounce off. Most musicians like to jam together anyway, so it's win-win. What's your number one tip for finding more time to practice? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thanks for tuning in, and remember, join us next time. Bye, guys.